in the Spirit by releasing your faith. With your hands on your Bible, repeat after me. Say, this is my Bible. It is God revealing himself to me. In it, he shows me. He's the faithful covenant-keeping God. Through my trust in his word. He includes me in his covenant. Therefore, I am who the covenant says I am. And I do what the covenant says to do. And I receive everything the covenant says is mine. I am a believer, not a doubter. So I have eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit of God is delivering to the people of God. And I am not only a hearer. I act on what I hear. And God performs his word in my life just like he promised. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Um, we are continuing to talk about God's word for us for 2022. And is it on time as always? 22 in scripture denotes a time of upheaval, concentrated chaos. Bingo. Hit the mark again. There you go, Lord. But his word, that's not his word to us. His word to us is about accelerated development and preparation for glory. In other words, what that really means is he has said that he will take advantage. He will take advantage of completing the work he began in you. In other words, bringing you to fulfillment, completeness, uh, bringing you into spiritual maturity. He said he'll do that. He's doing that. Philippians chapter 2. Glory to God. Because when things shift, they're chaotic. People don't have a grip. And that, that grip is what holds them stagnant. That grip is what holds them back. Because everything is always changing. Nothing ever stays the same. But people try to convince themselves they do. It's no better time than when things are shaken from you where God can come in for his purposes. And he's accelerating your maturity, your completeness in preparation for his appearing. Jesus is coming back. <laughs> and that is exciting. That is great news. And you want to be ready. And he is doing every he, he, everything he can do to ensure you are ready. But it's not automatic. Because he's doing this, it means you can. Because he's speaking this, it means you can. Can what? Obey. Cooperate. Go along with him. Because God cannot violate anyone's will. If a person does not want what he has prepared for them, they will not have it because it's their will. It's their choice. Just like anyone who wants what God has for them, nothing can prevent them from receiving that if they engage their will with their desire. Amen. Amen. Too many people just lounge around in their desire. No, God said when you desire, you better do something. He said, pray, believing, you receive. Not sit there dreaming that you have. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So um, this message is, it is highly instructional as far as Engaging your will. Uh, maybe you might think of it as a fine tuner for, uh, once again, walking by faith. Um, but what we're receiving is not only his promise to us, but 
how we are to receive that promise because just because God promises something doesn't make it so for anybody. It makes it available for anybody. That's all it does. And that's powerful. But I, I'm telling you, just too many people stop there. Just because it's available doesn't mean you'll ever experience or it'll ever benefit or ever change anything about you. But it can. And so that's what this message is getting into. You know, we, he, he started out by telling us he has us on course for his glory in this message. And like every course, there's going to have to be corrections along the way so you know the right direction so you're not lost. Ensuring us that you will always know. I, I will always know. You will always know what to do. Because if we cooperate with him if we obey him he's guiding and directing we're the pilots but he's calling the shots he's the control tower right. notice it's called a control tower Amen. but they're not on one single plane they are not pilots they just in control but if the pilot doesn't want to listen to their wisdom and advice it's to their own peril. They're still in control. You're the pilot. God is the control tower. And let me be very clear on this point. Because the biblically Ill illiterate, the uninitiated, uh, those who are ignorant of God and his ways, say, yes, God is in control. Well, I can look at that person's life, I, you know, those people always get me. You know, God's in control. B based on what? Because look at your life. When you, when you just listen, when you find somebody and they tell you, oh, God's in control of everything, just look at them. I mean, be, be, be gentle, but just look at them because those people, I've, I, I'm just giving you my experience. <laughs> you know, them people are a piece of work, and their lives are in shambles. Because they're believing a lie that God is in control. But their lives exhibit that he's in absolutely nothing in control of their lives. God is only in control of what you commit to him. Be clear on that. God is only in control. If you think God is in control of this world, well, keep on going because I'm leaving. You, you continue on your course. I'm out. I'm bailing. Because if there's anything I know about this world, it is out of control. God is only in control of what is committed to him. That's why my life is in control. Because I've committed myself to I follow, I obey him. Amen. And people who go with that deceit, God is in control of everything. Nope. Then you just look at everything in their life is out of control. Amen. I've been doing this a while. Praise the Lord. God is only in control of what is committed to him. C commit your life to him now. <laughs> you know, in every cockpit with those pilots, you know, when they get in trouble, there's always warnings. Pull up. Pull up. Pull up. You better put that thing in. Commit your life to God now. So you come out of that tailspin. He didn't, that's not him in control. That's not his will. He didn't do that. Glory to God. So in whatever challenge and chaos you find yourself in, you better ask, call out to God who gives us wisdom liberally to those who ask in faith, not with their intelligence, but ask in faith by way of the spirit and not the soul amen and he will make it known to that one because our minds have gotten us to where we've been without god that's why he says that, that person who is a double mind I mean they're in their mind and they're trying to be in the spirit they're in their mind trying to be in the spirit they can't receive anything so ask in faith and understand that the course god has us on includes changing us to be like Jesus. 
That's his will. Not copies, just like. Amen. Now, the indication, the proof that a person is like Jesus, that God has changed them, is that love is exhibited in them through their life. Now, not, not romance, not all these other, you know, ideas of love, but true love, agape, the, the Greek word agape, and God is love. And love is God's, not what he has or what he feels. It's who he is. And he made us new creations after himself. He's now our heavenly father. We're known as his children, which means he reproduced us. So if he is love, that's the only proof and evidence of a child of God. They are love. The simplest, cleanest way, the quickest way, we've covered all this, to remind you of what a child of God looks like, what love looks like is when a child of God thinks of, prefers, values their brother and sister in the covenant before ahead of themselves. It's to their own detriment. That's how you know. Period. So many people that talk about being children of God, they're all out for themselves. If God did you like that, see, that's not love. God loved you. He is love. And it's to his detriment. It cost him himself everything. So how, as his child, do you think it's going to be any less? You better start getting excited. Your life will take off when you make it your purpose, God's purpose. I exist to promote you. No, that's your confession. I exist to promote my brothers and sisters in Christ. Not my brothers and sisters. Not my neighbors and friends. Not my co-workers. My covenant brothers and sisters. Jesus said, when you have this love one for another, not the world, not your family, not your associates, but when you have this love one for another, meaning specifically who? My covenant brothers and sisters. Your Covenant brothers and sisters. Then things get exciting. Then, see, when life gets weighed down, when it gets dry, when you start whining and complaining, it's because you're completely out of this. It's all about you. God overflows. It is an adventure. It is fulfilling when you make your purpose To give your life to God, and he's going to pour it out to your brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. So he can fill you back up. And when love is formed in you, when God's reproduced himself in you, he's he's completed the work he started in you. The way you'll recognize it is you will finally be free of the love of this world. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, possessions, pleasure, and the pride, God don't like pride, the pride of what? Life, reputation, prestige, status. You will be free from all those bondages, for all those things come out of the world. Notice I did not say, but listen to what you did here, which is scary because I didn't say it. I said you're free from these bondages. I didn't say you're free from pleasure. God guarantees. God 
in his covenant, has covenanted to you pleasure, possessions, and prestige in righteousness. As you follow him, he's commanded these things to come on you and overtake you. But the world goes about it all backwards and make those things the goal. That means that's your love. That's the thing. That's the high. That's the number one. That's the objective. That's no. That's the love of the world. You're supposed to have love of love, the love of God. God first. Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness where he put you. And all these things shall be added to you. So when you live by love, you're living by faith, for faith works by love. If you're living by faith, living by love, love fuels faith, then you're in the spirit because faith is absent of your soul. It's absent of all your five senses. So there aren't many things to do. There are just many ways of talking about the one thing you're supposed to be doing. Walking in the Spirit is the same as walking by faith, is the same as walking in love. They are indistinguishable. There aren't three different things you're going to be wasting your time. This isn't complicated. Your thinking, that's where your problem starts. Your spirit knows it's like, that's right, that's right, and he's your spirit's telling you that's right. Who, who's it talking to right now? <laughs> your mush. <laughs> your dome. Amen. It's like, shut up. That's right. Shut up. I told you. See? See? You can't think your way to God. You can't think your way with God. Amen. You have to be bold enough. You have to be. So spiritual. I say it like that because when you say it, you don't know what you're talking about. You have to be so in the spirit. You leave your understanding. The love of God is beyond understanding. The peace of God is beyond. Tell me what your understanding is. Your ideas, your feelings, your emotions. That's what your understanding is. Yes, it is. Don't say nothing. Have you really gone beyond your feelings, your will, your thoughts? Because that's where God is. And so when people just continue in that realm, well, I think God's over here. I just feel the Spirit's moving me. They're nowhere in the faith zone. They're nowhere in the what? Spirit zone. Whatever you want to call it. They're nowhere in the love zone. Wherever you want, it's the same, it's the same thing. Amen. Oh, they're built up in their head. Oh, they're huge, soulishly. But they haven't made one move spiritually yet because they don't see it. They don't know why. They can't explain it. If you can explain it, if you know why, you ain't in faith. You're not in the spirit. You're not in love. If you think God deals with you based upon how he feels about you, you are sorely mistaken. I can take you to scripture after scripture after. We can just start in Genesis where God says by his feelings. I'm sorry I made you, and it grieves my heart I put you on earth. That's how he feel about you. That's the beginning of how he felt about you. This is what I said. What the Holy Spirit is telling you, you know, love ain't got nothing to do with feeling. It, his feelings didn't stop God who is love. He tells you how he feels about you. Moses, get, let's, let's do this. I'm going to wipe them all out and start out with you. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
Oh, he's on record. God ain't shy. But he's not run by his emotions. Yet people who claim to be his are still run by emotions. They're not even in his vicinity. You got to get beyond your understanding. How do I do that? By his word, by the spirit, and not by thinking. God wished he never made you. But here you are. You tell me what's stronger, love or your stank feelings. Because the love of God throughout his feelings, because you're here. You need to reevaluate your whole life. Starting with everyone who told you, I love you. Oh, that means you give me all of you. All of you, everything you got, everything. Because that's, that's what love is. That's what true love is. God didn't feel you. God didn't command or demand anything from you. Because he felt like and he regretted making you. Love made him bless you and change you, redeem you, deliver you. How could he do that? He had to give himself. So when someone says, I love you, that means they got you, which means they have to give you all of themselves, which means they have to quit, cancel, and forsake everything and everyone else. They don't love you. Mama don't, let's start with mama. My mama don't love you. She left you with the babysitter to go out with homeboy. Love does not exist on this planet. God is love and is none other. He birthed it into you. It doesn't exist here. The Greek word for your family, storge, it's, it's obligated. Parent, child, sibling, all that. That ain't, that ain't real love. It's conditional. You want to be in real love? Take your feelings out of it. Ooh. It's the key to a fulfilling marriage. Okay, praise the Lord. Glory to God. Every rocky marriage is all up in their feelings. You can tell by the volume around the house. <laughs> that volume is passion. A feeling, and it ain't fixing nothing around here. <laughs> it's making things worse, and people confuse passion, arrows, for love, agape. Oh, God is love, and he's changing you into love. So you're no longer in bondage to feelings, thoughts, emotions reputations, suggestions, influence. Amen. Why? So you can follow out the directions he's given you to get you to the glory he's prepared for you. Amen. So, so today, let's, let's work on this, see where it goes. Um, in your situation, the instruction for God, in this chaos, God says, no, you got, you got to stop getting ahead of me. You have to stop making bad, wrong decisions. From here on out, you have to stop letting your emotions rule you, decide and choose for you. You have to stop following the crowd, following the world. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your soul, mind. Really a subconscious part of it. Praise God. So when things are going, you know, you, you shut down your body, you tell it to shut up, you tell your mind, shut up, and you pray, you, Spirit, pray. And Holy Spirit will reveal your future. At the minimum, it's going to be 
the next step. Well, that's the future. Because you don't even see a way. <laughs> and you no way see the way to what he's prepared for you. Amen. I just don't know which way to turn. I know. So shut your head up. Shut your body up. Pray in the spirit. You'll always know. Control tower ain't mute. God said, I mean, he's going to tell you. And without your head and your body, because they will always cancel out interference, cancel the control tower, you'll finally hear the next step to make, and that's your future. So let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Uh-oh, watch out. We were here last week. And I'm going to read it because you need the context. You need to hear it again. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing again and hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's all about subconscious mind. That's all about the true heart. That's all about what really needs to be changed in us. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Because everybody uses their lips to talk nice and kiss up to God. But God says, that's your lips. But your heart, your mind, your subconscious, not your thinking, not your mind, not your conscious mind, because you're kissing up. Conscious mind. You have to use your conscious mind to use your lips to kiss or to say, to whisper sweet nothing. God says, oh, you draw close to me with your mouth, but your heart, your subconscious, what really counts, you don't even know where it is, and it's far away from here. That's what needs to be changed, and that takes repetition. Science now confirms this. And I learned this coming up. So I would intentionally wear myself out. Fatigue. You purpose to go to your breaking point. Now you can start. Everybody else went off the field because practice was over. Now I start. Subconscious learn when we're in this position. This is what we do. We don't hit a shower. We make this move. We make this calculation. We do this. We don't take a break. That was without Jesus. I just now, you know, I was born again, and I find uh, science bears all this out. Amen. Okay, I'm going to put it like this. You know, we live in the Bay Area, and y'all in the Warriors and Curry and all that. All that stuff he's doing, it is not tricks. It is not, I'm talking about his warm-up. Like, oh, it's warm-up. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I was doing way back then. You confuse your mind. That's what he's doing to get to the subconscious. That's why he'll pull your heart out, show it to you before you fall on the ground. He ain't got to think. He don't have to. He's not. Everybody on that court's thinking about the game. He ain't. He could be asleep. That's the subconscious. Subconscious don't need you awake. See, you can wait to get in the zone. The zone's a feeling. Or you can rewire your subconscious. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, okay. Praise the Lord. And that's, that's what we're talking about. Because we have to get past your understanding. God is nowhere in your understanding. Let me say it again. The peace of God is where? Beyond, un- the word of God. Okay, okay, I apologize. I thought you know these scriptures. The scriptures tell you. Don't care about his opinion. That the peace of God is beyond understanding. It says all understanding because it guards your mind. Well, your mind is a seat of understanding, so it's out. Philippians chapter 4, Colossians 3, Ephesians. You can look all these things up. The love of God is surpasses understanding. 
God is not in your understanding. <laughs> Romans 1 tells you this. No one's without excuse because your understanding needs all of five minutes to figure out God exists. That's your head. Right, there ain't no way this happened by chance. There's no, there's no cosmic boom. There's no evolution. There's no, no, somebody put this together by the visual of creation. And then you're done. By your mind, all or you can, you can try to tell people you don't believe it, but you do. Read Romans 1, and everybody's without an excuse because they know I exist. Just look at my creation. No, look at the intricacy of it. Go ahead, study it. You cannot deny Here I am. And that's the end. That's all he's given you. You are not going to study God out. You're going to have to search him out. In the spirit, by faith, beyond the intellect. Amen. I'm just telling you, days of fulfillment. That's what this is all about. Praise the Lord. It's not spooky. It's intensely pragmatic and practical. So much so, I think that's really why people don't do it. Because I will all have to change. Exactly. Like 1 Corinthians 2. Most of the, the mucky mucks, the religious folk, the denominations in the body of Christ, they want to argue on this. I have no interest in arguing because I want to do. <laughs> I don't need to debate it. I just need to try it and see. God says, come try. Come do and see. Because that's the only way you're going to be able to. He didn't talk about vis- physical sight. That's the only way you're going to come and know. Because you got to get past your intellect and understanding. You got the D.O. It's very pragmatic. It's very practical. God never talks about theorize with me. When, 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 when you can explain this to me, you're in faith. No, in fact, that's how he straightened Job up. He said, boy, you're crying bell ache enough? Now, 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 answer my question. Where were you? What did you do? How did you help me? How do you understand? No, I mean, God knows all the answers. None. Right. That means I'm God, and I'm beyond your understanding. And I'm calling you up to my level. I ain't putting you down. You're rolling around in the muck. On your belly licking dirt. I told you, get up, watch you. Come on, let's go. But you want to listen to the people, your so called friends. Maybe I don't know Job either. Okay, praise the Lord. I'm always coming from a scripturally literate perspective. <laughs> Amen. All right, so let's read some scripture. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, in whatever situation you are, shut your mind down. Definitely put your body out to play and listen, and the Holy Spirit will reveal to you your future. Watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, starting in verse 4. Again, the Word of God says, And my speech and my preaching were not with what? Enticing words of man's or human wisdom. See? That's, that's putting on airs and impressing folk. True ministers don't do that. I said, true ministers don't do that. They don't rely on alliteration to whip up the crowd. I know what alliteration is. I could waste all my time trying to put two words back to back. You don't even know what alliteration is. Don't don't worry about it. That's all emotional. Well, that's what I go to church for, is to raise my Well, that's what most people do. Mm Mm-hmm. Got to hear that song. And that's why nothing ever changes in their life. So they ain't run out and buy the CD with the song or stream it. Every time that song go off, they're just getting a puff to their emotion. You don't need that. That doesn't serve you. In fact, you are serving it. You're a slave to it. You have to push play. It don't push you. That's slavery. Amen. Goes on and says, but in demonstration of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, but can only be known by the way of us, Spirit, and of 
power, and that word power is the word dynamis, the Greek word dynamis. Get our word dynamite, which is talking about the Spirit's power, that w- the power we can only get from the Holy Spirit, the power God, Jesus promised us from on high when the Holy Spirit would come. Now we have this power as well. That's how he's able to demonstrate it. He goes on and tells us why. So that your faith should not stand in the people's wisdom, but in the power of God. My faith stands in the power of God, not your pole. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. That doesn't mean they never miss the mark. That's that word completing. When God said, I am completing the work that I began in you. Back in Ephesians, uh, excuse me, Philippians. He says them that are perfect or mature or he's brought to a level of completion of himself in that person. Yet not the wisdom of this world, which means this age. So we speak wisdom among them that are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age. Well, how do you speak the wisdom that's not of this age when you are living and of this age? Nor of the princes, the rulers of this world, this age, that come to nothing. Oh, this world, this age is ending. But we speak, oh, here we go. How do we do it? We speak the wisdom of God. Where do you get that? Where do you get the wisdom of God? From God. (laughs) You can't get it from a person. You can't get it from this world. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Scripturally, I don't care. We can't take votes or take polls or opinions. Scripturally, though, we have precedent. The only one time we speak mysteries is by the enabling of the Holy Spirit when we receive the promise of our Heavenly Father to be filled with the Holy Spirit. 14th chapter of this will make it dramatically clear that's when we speak mysteries when we pray with the holy spirit it's the only time we speak mysteries according to scripture but we speak the wisdom of god in a mystery when we depend on the holy spirit sounds about right the hidden which god ordained finished appointed worked out before the world age and this is really it kind of denotes all ages Before time, to our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, none of the rulers of this age knew, because they're in this age. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, eye has not seen, physical eye, nor ear heard, physical ear, neither has entered into the what? The heart, the subconscious. I don't mind so the heart, the mouth speaks. You talk to me with your lips, Jesus said, but your heart is, he's talking about the subconscious, the deep part, the spirit touching the soul, the the subconscious. He says, I, you can't, the eye can't get it there. The ear can't get it there. Neither has entered the heart of a person, the things which God has prepared for them, the things he ordained before the ages for their glory. Those things cannot get into a person's subconscious physically through eye and ear, but God has revealed. Did y'all get that? Look, you're, you, you, can, you can, well, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yeah, that's not wisdom. That's faith. That's not the wisdom of God. That's faith. This is something else. This is specifically the wisdom of God, the things he has specifically worked out, prepared, finished for you who love him. But he has revealed the things, what things? The things God's prepared for us, those things outside this age for our glory. God has revealed them to us by his spirit, by his spirit. Well, that the Holy Spirit doesn't contact our mind or our body, but us spirits. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For here we go. No, what man, what person knows the things of a person save the spirit of the person which is in them. Your mind doesn't know what's going on with you. That's what that just said. Even so, the things of God knows no person, no man, but the Spirit of God. Now, now, see, the Scriptures... 
speak from the standpoint, you can say, take it for granted. Paul was talking to spirit-filled, born-again believers. Because no one was talking about, oh, he went away. No one was talking about, oh, we denominationally don't believe that. Who these people are talking to are the blood-bought, spirit-filled children of God. Because what does it say now? And he didn't say, now I. We who? The perfect. The, the church is coming along in the perfect, perfection. Now we have received. Not the spirit of the world, not this age, but the spirit which is of God. Why? So that we might know. Oh, that's not intellectual. Intellectual knowledge is the Greek word gnosis. Guess what word we get from that? Hypnosis is right here. See, you're hearing that hypnosis? What does that mean? We blank out your conscious mind. It's the, where we get the word Gnostic from. And God don't like no Gnostics. And you get the word, ah, ah, put an A in front of something, it's bad. Etymology, I'm just, talk to Tracy. I'm a pro. This word is gnosko. It doesn't sound like gnosis. This is the knower knowing, the spirit knowing. Spiritual knowing, amen, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Was that too much for you? I was just kind of like, man, I don't know who I'm talking to. Okay, go right again. He might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things we also speak not, he just emphasizes the thing, comes out of different directions, not in the words with man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches. By the way of the spirit, not the intellect, comparing spiritual with spiritual, not intellectual with spiritual. Not soulish with spiritual, but spiritual with spiritual. But the natural man, again, that's not that, that, that that's really talking about the mind of a person. Because there are natural Christians and there are natural people on the street. It's depending where their mind is. You can find that in Romans uh, very clearly. It says, but the natural man receives not what? The things of the, the things of the, not the word, the things of the spirit of God. The not, let me read it again. The natural person does not receive the things of the spirit of God. Why? Their foolishness to that one. Neither can he know them because they are, again, not intellectually or soulishly, but spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual, that's different from the natural. Y'all see it? Yeah. Judges, discerns, better word is discerns, everything. Because you're going by the spirit of truth. Yet that one themselves is judging no man. No one can figure out what they're doing because they're walking by faith and not by sight. And that don't make sense. So no one can figure out. That's just a weirdo over there. All I do is win, win, win. Mm -hmm. When I enter, they put their hands up. Everybody else is. And you can tell because all the other ones are just stunned. They're trying to f f f figure it out. I'm living it out. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to you, Lord. Thank you. Not because I'm good, because you're good. You're doing this in me. I just ain't fighting you. I ain't attacking you. I'm not interrogating you. I have enough sense, IQ, to know you're greater than I am. So you could probably teach me a few things. <laughs> For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? Nobody. But I have. You, you could too. The mind of Christ. What is this all about? Praying in the spirit that you might know every step to take about your future. Because with your mind, you're going to have a clue. And that's going back to again. Verse 6 and 7. 
We speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this age, this age, nor the rulers of this age that come to nothing. But we speak wisdom of God in a mystery. When we pray in the Holy Spirit, when we depend on the Spirit of God, the hidden which God ordained, appointed, finished, completed, worked out before the ages to our glory. So now when I'm praying now, I'm talking about my future that I haven't been in, that God ordained, appointed, finished, and completed in the ancient past. You, you need to hear that un until you, uh, you receive that. So what he just said is when I'm praying now, depending on the Holy Spirit, not my wisdom, but the wisdom of God, what is happening is I'm praying now. God's bringing me into my future that he ordained in my past. You better understand God is interdimensional. <laughs> and time's not a dimension that challenges him. I don't know who you think you're trying to find out. How are you going to find out that being with your pea brain? When he equips you with him being on board with you, you're praying right now about what you know nothing about, completely dark to you, the future that he already been in. I'm going to keep saying that. You need to keep hearing that till it gets inside you. Why would I waste my time doing anything else? I don't know what to do. <laughs> now I know what I'm going to do. He showed me. He didn't tell me. showed me. I know what step to take now. I ain't going to tell you. It don't make no sense. You're going to ask me 50 million questions. Let me be perfectly clear with you. I ain't got an answer for none of them. Except he has shown me. Except I have revelation. I just know. That's the, only thing, that's the only thing that can explain Pastor Rick's life. I don't know what you be looking at. Everybody see, that's what they do with their mind. They try to look for and give a reason, an excuse for someone's life. You can't for mine. Ryan's had a front row view. I wasn't always in Christ. Should have never let me get in Christ. Because now, forget Iron Man. Hulk. How'd they make Hulk bigger than everything? Anyhow, forget that. I know I, the Avengers, they, they need me. They look for me. When they're done screwing around and they in trouble, Rick! In case you didn't know, Black Panther died. I ain't dying. You could too. I'm not keeping this to myself, but I can't make you. God can't make you, but you ain't going to stop me. Every time you think you got me in a corner, you best duck. You know what's good for you, you better run. Because I ain't coming out. My God coming through. Every time. My staff has to sit there and look. Huh. My board has to be. What's the pastor going to say? Proof and proof and proof and proof. I mean, they all say, well, just so we're on record or just so we can say this, yeah, go on and say. One of these days, we're going to go back through the record. 
Not to put it, not, no, not, not for any reason, but to see God. Yeah. This is the only way you're going you're gonna to get built is you're going to go back and say, that's where I was in my thinking. Here's someone who moved in faith. And here's what God did. Didn't see that one coming. Well, I didn't see it either. He just led me. He showed me. Because I'm praying in the now about my future that's already settled. There is nothing to chance. It's guaranteed because he already fixed it. If you follow him, if you obey him, if you humble yourself to him, if not, nothing guaranteed. But when I shut up and he reveals and I walk out, that's why I sleep. I don't care what you say. I don't, I don't, I don't care. Mm -mm, I don't care what you, what you try to show me, what, what people hear. Mm -mm, my God. He already finished it. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Number two. Here we go. All right. Jesus is still speaking to us today. Here's people's problems. I guess we got to go back next week again. Here's people's problems. They think they're smart. I know the Bible. I know the word, Pastor Rick. So do I. I don't talk like that. What's wrong with you? I don't think you do know the Bible because the more you know, the more you're going to stand. I don't know nothing. No, you don't need the spirit to help you with that. You get in a word like, what, what, what? I don't think you're really reading the word. If you read Genesis 1, 1, and then you read Genesis 1, 2, you're already lost. <laughs> In Genesis 1, 1, God created. Go ahead and turn there. Go ahead and turn there. I'm going to show you. Genesis 1, 1. In the beginning. What happened? God created. Okay, let's start. In the beginning. When's that? We don't know. Look, not then. And the problem with uninitiated, ill-advised, not smart, religious folk is they want to tell you that's when the beginning is. That's not what that said. I can read. It's telling me after the beginning what happened in the beginning. And I don't know, and neither do you, when the beginning is. So you stupid saying it was 6,000 years ago or 6 million years ago and want to fight and prove a point. Because you're stupid, you don't know. And God ain't going to tell us. <laughs> God is love, isn't he? Yeah. And see, I just know enough of him. You, you spend enough time in the Word. He makes everything perfect. Yeah. Read verse 2. Now, now, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth, so they had to be perfect. Read verse 2. You're lost. You're gone. That's not the beginning either. And the place is jacked up. And the earth is what? That ain't perfect. And the earth is dry land. If you just read down verses, that's why he's saying the earth is what? Without form void because... Earth is dry land, according to God's definition, a few verses down. See, I know the word. I don't need to talk to you. I don't need your opinion. The earth, he's not talking about the planet. He said the earth is without. It's jacked up. And what else does it say after that? God, God is light. Wait, 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 wait. God's light. And if he's in the beginning, it's bright. How it dark? See, you lost. You're thinking with that pea brain. And darkness is upon the face of the. What's the deep? Hold on a second. We're talking about the earth. The earth is dry land. The deep is water. Yeah. 
Maybe one day you'll come with me. <laughs> Interdimensionally with my God yeah. in the truth. And I can put all your dominoes up straight. You keep putting them up, and you, then you had no, <laughs> you got to start all over again. <laughs> and who brooded? And darkness was over the deep. And what? I, see, I know where I'm at in the spirit. He there brooding. He's sitting there waiting. He moved like, okay. Why he hovering? Why he touching? Why ain't he doing anything? Because God got to say. That's not the creation of the world. That's not no primordial soup. If you read the rest of the S-U-M of Bible, you'll be clear. You're like, oh, wait, wait, something, wait, wait. Something done lit off. Okay, what's the next verse say? That's not, look, he said, let there be light. That's a command. It's not a creation. He didn't say, now I'm going to make light. What did he say? A command. What did he say? Okay, you could say it like that, which is fine. Let there be light. Or he could say, light, come on. Light be, light shine. I'm allowing you. Which tells you what? Think, no, 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 shout out. Just think for a moment. Which tells you. It had to already be there, exist, but was being prevented. This ain't creation. Oh. I got I to stop right now because I will light off into this. I will, I will blow your mind up. This should have been demolished long time ago. That's what renewing the mind. Oh, yeah. Oh, and because you'll begin to know the true only. God says, I am God and there is none else. No, 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 no. I, I believe that's Isaiah, well, 46. He says, I am God. We didn't say he's God. I am God and he says there's none else. He didn't say there's no one else. He didn't say there are no other gods. No, let that sink in. He said, I'm God. There's nothing else without me. Everything exists to this day by him. He didn't fix something and send it off to exist by itself. No, it exists by him. He said, there ain't nothing else here. There ain't nothing else here. Amen. Glory. So you better know that one. And you can't know that one by intellect. Because I read Genesis 1 and 2 and all of Genesis and thought I'm reading creation and all that stuff until, you know, till I, you know, because I was in my head. But the Holy Spirit said, I thought you wanted to know. I do, okay. But that don't make sense. I thought you wanted to know. I'm showing you. It don't make sense. I'm showing you. And he starts assembling revelation. Here's my point. Still on number two. We have to come back next week. Glory to God. I just is. Y'all get anything? Yeah. I, I didn't get on it. I'm still in number two. What's your number two say? Jesus. Still. Still. Still talking to this day. According to what he said. Religious people don't believe that. Religious people don't depend on that. If Jesus is still speaking today, I better depend on that. Yeah. If these people, because they tell you the Holy Spirit's not here, biggest, hugest, darkest demonic lie there is, or that the Holy Spirit's only for the 12 apostles, that's nowhere in Scripture, demonic, ghastly, ugly lie. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. No, God don't love no 12. He don't love them. Not, not with those feelings. See, that they're basically they're back in. The night ain't got it. God don't care for none of us. He lets agape himself truly take over. Feelings, sit down. Let, 
let me let that sink in for me a little bit. One more time. He tells you, I wouldn't do you again. I'm not happy with you. Don't particularly care for you. Yet here you are, which tells you the word of God, God's word, what he has spoken, oh my, is stronger than what he feels. His feelings can't change what he said, ever. Man, yeah, that's why I had to say it again. Now, as his child, you're supposed to operate the same way. You know, if you go home today and just sit down and think on, if I can never take back, change, alter, amend what I say, especially when I feel contrary, Because that's how God rolls. I kill you, but I'm me. And I said I wouldn't, so I won't. I can't turn because I said from doing you good. But I sure want to. Oh, I sure feel like getting me some satisfaction, says the Lord. Oh, no, he, I wax hot. Oh, no, he, maybe sometime I'll take you through some scriptures you might have conveniently forgot about. Feelings ain't got nothing. To do with integrity, character, God, who is love. And you're supposed to be born of God, which is love. It's not a feeling. It's a character. It's integrity. And what I just showed you in Genesis' example, God is still speaking. Jesus is still speaking today. And how woefully ignorant, how completely disadvantaged we'll make ourselves if we don't listen. Okay, this is as far as we're getting today. Go to John chapter 16. And I know you, well, if you want to. I know you got 12 there, but I'm going to read a little bit more. You got John 16, 12. Let's read it together. It says, I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Whoa, 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 whoa. He didn't say I have two more things to say to you. He didn't say I got one more thing to say to you. He didn't say I got three, four, five. He said, I have a whole lot more to say to you. Not about you. To you. For you. And he flat out said, you, 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 you can't get it. You couldn't receive it. You can't handle it. It's beyond you right now. So he's automatically talking in the future. Yeah, we done. We're going to take this real slow. Okay, praise the Lord. Say, Jesus still speaking today. Jesus still speaking today. This is how it says in the Amplified. I have still many things to say to you, but you are not able to bear them or take them upon you or to grasp them now. That's the truth. Then. And you're in that category then as long as you don't receive the Holy Spirit. You know different from them then. Did did you hear that? Them then. Them then. You're no different. But if you're born again and have asked the Father to baptize you with the Holy Spirit, well, you're the now. Now is always the present. Throughout the future, God is specific with his words. He said, I still have many things to say to you, but you can't handle the truth. All he speaks is truth. And he's spoken truth to you now, and you can't take it. (laughs) Well, I don't know if I need the Holy Spirit. You can't take it to them. You still going with that head. But remember, God's released me because he's told me, so I got to. And if you don't know God's because you don't want to, period. 
Ask him to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Put up or shut up. See, that's what's going on in the world today. It's so messed up. They teach kids just to talk, and whatever you say is valid. No. (laughs) Prove it. Do an experiment. Put some A-C-T-I-O-N to your talking. I told you, when I came up, no one was talking. Because you're going to get chest check, chin check, jaw check. <laughs> Say what you want, but it's coming at you. <laughs> so everybody knew what they said. I mean, they don't even know what that is. They don't know what that is. So you better know where you stand. You better know your capabilities now. And for the last 15, 20 years, education system just garbage. Just Tell me what you think. I don't care what you think. You better learn this right here. Two plus two is two. I don't care if you feel green or purple today. That's, everybody else is going to buy this. You're going to get left behind. Oh, you can have feelings, but you can't succeed with them. You, can't hate, you can hate this class. You better learn to ace it. The world's completely given over to feelings. Oh, no, I, I can't go to class today because I don't feel like good. And it's excused? Yeah, you get excused from school when I came up. Oh, you, 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 you late three. Oh, y'all remember that. You late three. I ain't, I ain't old. I am not old. You late three, you might be out that class. You can come in with the notes you want to. <laughs> Maurice, did you bring notes in there that you forged or tell you? Let's go this is my late. Then they, they would take it. Oh, what, what did you give me a note for? You know, I told you, Mr. Sherrod, to be in class. These many absences. And this, this junk has come into the church, into the body of Christ, like God's ever going to go after the world. And it's a novel idea to tell people do something. Well, I don't feel like the stove's going to burn me. Well, go ahead. <laughs> well, that's just like their other, all their other feelings. All my feelings. All your feelings. It don't matter. Amen. Put up or shut up. Let's find out. You can't go with feelings. There's something called truth. For our good. God ain't putting you down. He's trying to build you up. You're putting yourself down. You, you might as well put on your own clown suit, try to, you know, say that, well, I don't feel. I don't think. God don't need you to think or feel. He right. And he's putting you up on it. It'd be one thing to act like that, when he, he, but I'm going to crush you with it. No, he's trying to put you up, trying to put you on with it. Trying to raise you to his level. Trying to glorify you with his glory. I don't understand thinking like that, but it better be on my terms. What house you grow up in? <laughs> I can't even talk about home training no more because there is none. It don't mean anything. It used to mean like home training. Everybody kind of it was in a, everybody knew what that meant. Okay, I'm on. Jesus still teach, still speaking today, and this is what's jacking people up because they'll. They'll go to Genesis 1. Say, See, the earth's only 6,000 years old. I don't know where the, oh, I, 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 never mind. They'll say it's 6,000 years old, or, and this is that, and this is these old. And, and science, but science say, but this rock is 40 million years old. Well, let's pump the brakes on that, too. Hold on a second. <laughs> You've been here for, let's just say, 1 million years to know if carbon doesn't change its pro. You don't know. I'm going to tell you like this on all my revelation from God. There ain't no way possible this, this earth is 6,000 years. There ain't no way. But them millions and billions, you smoking dope too. <laughs> like everything else, there's something in the middle. Right. 
There have been so many ice ages. How you know? Based on what? Based on what we've observed. Okay, but you've observed for the nanosecond. In the grand scheme. So in their perception, it takes ice age thaw, ice age thaw, ice age, how many? I don't know. Ice age thaw, ice age thaw. I travel, I've been, I, I love science. I've been to Alaska. They say, oh, you know, the, the, the last ice age, isn't it? the last was probably the last. What are you talking about? They're doing that to explain erosion. Except when I look in the Bible, I just showed you. Okay, this is, this is just, this, okay, okay, here we are. I just showed you Genesis 1, 2, where the entire, the entire world was covered with water. The earth, the entire earth was covered with, earth is dry land. God didn't say in the beginning he created water. God said in the beginning he created heaven and So there was a gigantic flood. Noah ain't even a sparkle in his little grand grappy pappy pappy little eye, whatever else. Ain't no, this ain't Noah. There ain't nobody on this planet with that flood. And when I read the scripture, in more than one place, it says, God at your voice, his what? Your thunderings, which is his voice, the waters, mm -mm, that's Noah's. It said they fled immediately. They haste away at your voice. He didn't say nothing with Noah's flood. You read Noah's flood, the water didn't go nowhere for months. If you think this is fast and you think this is haste, you some kind of special. It's too different. Now, I just sit here with the mush that he did give me, but taking his word. And if from before we ever got here, the world is encased with water. And I pay attention what he says about it. He speaks to it. And there's separation between two waters. It's called the firmament. When you used to be on this planet, you would look up. Yes, there were people here. And you saw, I guess you just look at an ocean. Water. Okay, I ain't got time. For that. I just. It's right. <laughs> read the first chapter. How can you say you're biblically literate and you ain't read the first? That's the first chapter. Read it. Read it. Go back to Genesis 1 and watch what I'm saying. Literally, go look at it. He spoke and the firmament came. And it separated the waters from the waters. And this was encased. Our atmosphere was encased. In, you're looking out there. I guess it was still blue. Kind of look. I bet, it, I bet that was some kind of sight. And then it says, at his voice, and the earth came, and the waters collected in the seas, and that's, it said, immediately. Now, I'm just here with my mush, but I, some science, too, don't get me wrong. Mount St. Helens, y'all know what that is? Yeah. Erupted a few years ago, well, more than a few years ago now. Okay, I got time for it. But I just, I'll just tell you what I can imagine, I can see. If you pull the, the plug on the tub, that's not hasty, but that's pretty quick. It's going down. If God caused the water to hasten real quick, you ever seen a tsunami? You ever seen videos of tsunami and the devastation? What have you stop? What have you noticed when you've seen the videos of tsunamis? It's in slow motion. Think about it. It's in slow motion. I think. No, they didn't slow down the film. Waves ain't quick. And here it comes in. And it's moving like this. You know, it's going fast, but it's, it's, it's not. It don't look quick to me. And it's just pound everything in its way. And then it gets bigger. Why? Because it takes everything up in its way. And, you, and it's a battle ram. If God pulled the plug and the water's boom. Oh, there's a Grand Canyon. Right here. Forget your millions and billions a year. Boom. When Mount St. Helen erupted. Move, earth moved, all that stuff, this and that. And then a storm and a rain came in a matter of days. And the water came down, and you had a very nice facsimile of the Grand Canyon overnight. 
That's a little test lab. That's a little. Oh, no, I look. I search. I have an inquiring mind. But I never get outside God's word. And so I can see if he, he said it. You go to Genesis 8. That's where you're going to find 6 and 8. You're going to find Noah's flood. But he had to wait months, weeks. Send the bird out. Have we landed yet? The waters continually, that slow, abated. I ain't stupid. If God says something moon, but I can see it in the scripture, this rock would not take any time to form. So whenever he decided to do it, he did it according to his word. And science is wrong and religion's wrong. But I'm in truth. I'm somewhere in the middle and I'm right because God is right. You could be wrong. I could be wrong, but God's going to be right. And I'm going to go with God. So let me help you out with Sunday school again. It, it didn't rain for 40 days, 40 nights. It wasn't going to rain. He told you. He poked the firmament. He caused the firmament to open. And why don't no water there? And it, shh. Now, where was it before? Covering the earth. There's no debate whether there's Noah's flood. Every civilization has recorded. And it didn't, it wasn't a, a lake. It was the entire world was covered again because that water came back down. That he separated. I can go with that versus your bootleg science real easy. Science, I'm talking about evil, wicked science that tries to demolish God. It takes fathoms more faith to believe that garbage than it does God. But there are true scientists today. They'll come along with me. I study after them. They'll, they'll tell you, like, no. Nah. I'm a scientist. I know what it's got. And that carbon dating is not reliable. They've proven carbon dating is not reliable a long time ago. Let me tell that again. They have proved science has proven carbon dating is not legit to a certain point. Because there wasn't nobody here. So you got to factor that in there too. Okay, praise the Lord. Why am I saying that? Because Jesus, from the beginning, before you were ever here, he was talking. Before you got here and others were here, he was talking. And when there's a problem, he was talking. The problem with people, that he's still talking today. He's been talking the entire existence. All of a sudden, today, people are like, nah, 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 nah. Jesus don't talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't hear the Lord. Wish y'all heard the Lord talk. He's talking today. We'll come back next time. Let me just read this. Verse 12, I, and we're taking it from his mouth. I have yet many things to say to you. You can't take it. You can't handle the truth. You can't handle the truth right now. Now, back then. But then he says, how be it? However, when, when, well, that's now for us. When he, wait a minute, Jesus, who are you talking about? The spirit of truth. Who's that? Well, you can go back and look, and that's the Holy Spirit, the other comforter. When he, the spirit of truth, is come. Well, he wasn't to the people he was talking to. But he's long since come talking about our relative time. When he is come, he shall not. Are you paying attention? Ooh, he will guide you into all truth. When the world began and not. For he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever. Listen to this. But whatsoever are all that he hears. Huh? Yeah, right now, on t- ongoing. He's presently hearing. Who is? The Holy Spirit. Well, he hears. He'll speak. And he will show you your future. Things to come. If you're listening. If you'll obey God. If you'll go with God beyond your senses, your intellect. You'll really enter into his realm. He'll elevate you into wisdom that's his outside of this age. Come on. There ain't no class you could take get you in on this stuff. This this place should be packed just if people want to know. So it says that the Holy Spirit's hearing right now all the time. And that's what he speaks right now all the time he's hearing between jesus and the father so he's not telling them he's telling us what do you think they're talking about 
Not what you talk about. They know the news. They talk about the plans they made for you. Scripture say they're always mindful of. They're thinking about you. They talking about you. They talking about you and the plans are made. We got to get them here. And the control tower is talking and telling you, this is your course. Maintain this heading. No drop down here. No rise. Reduce speed. Accelerate speed. You no, know, I don't know. Of course you don't know. That's not the question. Are you going to do it or not? Are you going to do? That's it. Two simple letters. Do. Then you will. K N O W. Not with your intellect with your spirit. You'll have verifiable proof or fruit, but you'll never be able to explain how that fruit got here. All you'll be able to say is, I just D-I did. D-I-D. And he brought it to pass. I commit my way to him. I trust also in him. And he does it. Psalm 37. Thank you, Lord, for still speaking today. praying now about your future that was already concluded in the past. See, God starts at the end. God only starts because he knows the end. God only starts because he's been at the end. He's finished. It's hard to articulate because we don't get it. But maybe this will work then. If God started, it's only because it's done. That's what they're talking about. They ain't talking about your news. That's what they're talking about. Your birth, I told you, is proof. It's done. I won. It's complete because he ordained it. He appointed it. He finished it. If God starts something, it's only because it is finished. You know that from Genesis. One, two, three, four. I don't care what chapter you're in. How you say, let there be light, and you say, that's right. If it didn't already exist, if it already all finished, and it matched what he already had from the end. Yeah, that's it. So your very existence, that's why he tells you, I, don't, I know the plans I made for you. You don't. Plans for your good and your destiny, your future, not an end. And people miss it because they get smart. People miss it because they get intellectual. I'm not the smartest, but I'm probably more intellectual. Most people you know. I think I demonstrated that today. But I, I, I'm, I'm in the spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh, you research Mount St. Helen all the time? No, I'm intellectual. I ain't the smartest. I'm probably more intellectual people you know. It means nothing. I'm going to side with Solomon. I'm going to side with Paul. I'm going to side with all of them. All of us who know, we know nothing. And why do I need to know something when I can know something? Why well, do I need to know something when he's there to talk to me, when he's there to show me? Just like in Genesis in the beginning. They knew all things. They didn't obey it. They knew before they ate it what that fruit would do because God told them so they knew. There wasn't anything they didn't know. Wasn't no test, dummies. It was a rebellion. What do you do with that kid? You tell them for their good. This is what that is. And this is what will happen to you. If you don't handle it properly, if you do that with your child and they hurt themselves, parents, you don't have a quick one. No, I'm, no, I'm saying this. I'm, no, I'm saying this with love. You don't have a quick one and you better watch them. You got some kind of special. And so your job is increased. Oh, that's what the father did. <laughs> some kind of special at him. Ain't going to stop me. He had to go intensely to work now, the father. Not Adam. I just want to please my father. He don't need to do more work for me. 
You already finished everything. Let me prove my appreciation for you, Father, my love for you, because you first loved me, giving you back, offering back the life you gave to me. You glorify yourself. I can't glorify me. I can't glorify you. You glorify yourself through me. You made me the light. I am the salt. But if I lose my savor, if I lose my flavor, that means I'm absent of you. Nothing. And I can be a light that you caused to stop shining. Which evidently happened because he said, okay, light. <laughs> he didn't say, oh, I create you, light. He didn't say, shine, light. What did he say? You, you be now. You do what I create. You know, so he created some other time. Now do what you do. And what happened? The light did. He said, good. Father, we bless you and praise you for this word. Thank you for still speaking to us to this day. Let us hear. We've claimed ears to hear and eyes to see, but they're spiritual and spiritual only. You alone supply them and create them and are glad to give them to us who hunger and thirst. You, by your spirit, the spirit of wisdom, you have deposited this word in our hearts. And with understanding, we have received it. Therefore, there is no enemy that can distort, that can steal, that can disrupt this that you have sown. So I stand in agreement with you, Father, agreeing with you. No weapon formed against us can prosper, does prosper. And therefore, this word that you've sown into our subconscious, into our spirit, into our heart, accomplishes every last thing that pleases you and prospers in everyone who receives it like you sent it to do. It completes your purpose. Therefore, we are changed. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you for not allowing us to be as you found us, to be as you've called us, but you change us when we cooperate with you and renew our minds. Not to improve our minds, renew our minds, but telling the mind we must lean to the Spirit. We can't figure this out. We don't have the strength, but we knew the mind and know that you still speak to us today, and we hear you by your spirit in our spirit. So we operate by your wisdom, wisdom from above and not of this world, not of this age, not found anywhere around here. Thank you. Thank you for thinking so highly of us, Father. Jesus, you gave us your life so that we can have life more abundantly. You gave us your life to give weight to God's covenant. God didn't, you didn't need to do that, Father. Jesus, you didn't need to do that. We needed that. Thank you. We now know you will not go back on your word. For you have given us your life up front. And the life we now live, let us live by faith, your faith, Jesus. And we might be all you intend for us to be. Holy Spirit, we need you. We can't be who God's called us to be without you. He sent you from on high with that power so that we can now do all things to follow our Heavenly Father, to follow the, the conversations you revealed to us that the Son and Father are having about us, to come into the plans they made for us long before time began, before time started. Make it our desire just above everything else to please you. We thank you for the victory, Jesus. We thank you, Father, for always causing us to triumph in Jesus' name. And everyone who's in agreement, say amen. Amen. 